All right, welcome everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta, VCSO and security consultant at multiple organizations. I also help security professionals and freshers to get into cybersecurity and excel those who are already into it, okay? Now, this is a mock interview series and with me, I have Jamin Pater. Hi, Jamin, how are you? I'm good, Rajneesh, how are you? Wonderful, wonderful, I'm good. Now, this is the session where Jamin will be the interviewer and I'll be the candidate and he will ask me certain question. I have to answer it. And he might also ask some, some counter questions as well. Okay. All right, Jamin, so let's get started. Okay, Rajesh. So my first question is, what are the three ways to authenticate a person? Sure, absolutely. So that it's a principle that says there are three ways we can authenticate anyone. Something you know, this involves the username and password, something that you remember, uh, that's password, your pin, or maybe any security questions. Second principle is something you have. So this, this majorly relies on my, uh, my smart card, physical card that I have, maybe my, maybe my mobile phone, having two-factor authentication apps like Cisco Duo, Google Authenticator, or Microsoft uh, Authenticator app as well. Third method is the something you are that belongs to, you know, uh, the, the biometric authentication, fingerprint, retina, maybe. So this method uses unique biometric uh, of, of the individuals. As I said, it could be iris scan, facial recognition, or voice recognition and everything. So these are the three ways to authenticate a person. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh-huh. Then have you ever worked on any IAM solutions? Yes, absolutely. I worked on few. Okay. Uh, I worked uh, with please. the Okta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I worked with the Okta solutions and uh, I worked with setting up the Okta solution, uh, setting up its uh, single sign on multi factor authentication and uh, also worked in user provisioning, adding a user organizing them in a group or connecting them with certain applications as well. Um, I also worked with the Microsoft Azure directory. There was a project um, uh, six months back where we had to turn up, uh, you know, Windows virtual desktop and we had to integrate it with the uh, 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 Citrix NetScaler virtual apps. So in that project, I worked with the Microsoft Azure Active Directory and domain services as well and uh, you know integrate with the on-premises application and also i worked with the office 365 uh, integration adding users adding different accounts organizing them in a group creating new domains uh you know and uh, yeah so I even worked in as i said integration with the other applications too I even worked a little with the ping identity I, I can't say I've, I've made my hands dirty with it but I do have a basic idea about its MFA configuration, user authentication configuration. I haven't got a chance to work with the API and SSO a lot, but I do have an understanding of it. Yeah. Okay. So Rajnish, when you say you do have an understanding of SSO, how does SSO works? So SSO is a single sign-on. It's an authentication process that helps the user to access multiple application or services with just one set of login. And the user don't have to uh, enter the username and password again and again. Instead of requiring user to log in separately for each application, the SSO can help to uh, can help the user to authenticate once and then access all the connected application you know, seamlessly, I would say, just the way Google works, right? So we authenticate just on the Google, right? And all the, or maybe on the browser, uh, Google Chrome, right? And all the associated application of Google, get we get access to it directly without re-authenticating it. So the way it works is, first, the first phase is the user authentication. In this step, mm -hmm. when the user uh, attempt to access the application or service, um, it, 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 the request will be redirected to the SSO authentication server, which works in the backend. Now, the moment we uh, submit our request to the actual application, it goes to the backend SSO authentication server. 
and that's where the SSO server prompt the user to enter the credential, such as user and password or all the mm-hmm. all the different authentication types that we discuss in the first question. And if the authentication is successful, the SSO server will generate a unique token or I would say a ticket, right? That serves as a proof of user's identity. And once this ticket has been generated or the token has been generated, the token will be sent back to the user browser and the user browser will save it for temporary period of time. Okay. And that will be expiry period for every token. Now, when the user tries to access another application or a service within the same SSO environment, the application requests the authentication. And instead of prompting the user to log in again, the application send the token. The application send the token to the SSO server for further verification. And if the token is valid, the user get authenticated and the SSO server sends the confirmation to the application saying that, uh, you know, uh, the user will should be granted access without the uh, users to re-enter this the, the same credentials again. Okay, so that that's how the SSO really works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this yeah. Is, yeah, this is all I have for today. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you so much, Jamin, and thank you so much, everyone. If you have any question, do let us know in the comment section. We would love to hear that. Thank you so much. Yeah.